Chris Hoke in studio for the whole hour here on Cooking Joe. And before we move on to the defense, Hoke, I mean, the big story this week really is Ben's health. Yeah. What if he can't play? Do you have faith in Mason Rudolph? I do. I, Mason's given me no reason over uh, the last two years um, that he can't. I, I always look back to people want to question Mason. Last year he came in in that Browns game, and the Browns were – their back was up against the wall. Was it week 17, right? And they had to win that game to get in the playoffs. And Mason came in and put, uh, in a must-win game for them, took them to the ropes. And they ended up winning that game at the end. But um, I, he played over, threw over four, 300 yards, had one bad pick, had a run back, you know, the running back missed the, missed the block, he had a backer in his face. But other than that, I, I, I think he represented himself well. He's represented himself well in the preseason. Um, and so if Ben can't go, but let me tell you right now, Ben's going to play. Ben's going to play. I don't think there's any. He's played with more serious injuries than these yeah. in the past. He's a tough guy. Joe, can we ask him about the defensive side of the ball here? In, uh, I want to expound on Rudolph a little bit. Oh, okay, go here. for it. Go for it. I mean. What is he showing you to think that he can't do it? Well, the other side of it, I mean, the the devil's advocate side would be even in that Browns game, he threw a killer interception. That's what I'm talking, I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 Um, he also, in, in the preseason, while he played well, had a terrible throw at the goal line. He's had other games, I think, of the game in Cleveland even before the uh, the helmet incident that he was terrible in. Yeah. He got pulled the next time out for Duck. They had a chance to go with Mason in the home Cleveland game, the rematch that year. That, with a I, lot I don't want to go back. There, there, was a lot, there were a lot of other variables involved. I don't want to go back to that season because there was a lot of things going on, him getting the head on the head. Him being called, labeling it, labeled, and called some names. There's a lot to that. So let's let's put that aside. I don't, he was getting better before all that took place with Miles Garrett. Let's be honest. He was getting better. He was playing well. Came on a short week, right? A tough environment. But isn't all that rookie. stuff part of playing quarterback? But, 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 but it does. But, but it does. But he he was deal, he was dealing with some extenu- extenuating circumstances. That so a you asked me what I've seen in his career that would lead me to I think, not I believe I in think him. Where am second, I supposed what is to he, go? Is he year three right now? Year three? Four. Year four. 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 Okay. Year four. I think the last year and this year, I mean, preseason, he showed that he had good command of the offense. He can throw the ball around. And you're talking about you're, you're picking up bad plays over the last three years, four years. Do you want to go back and look at the bad plays that Ben's made? No, want, to go, want to go last week to the number one overall pick, and he threw three picks and three passes? Horrible passes. I mean, we can go back and look at every quarterback that's starting the NFL and pick out bad plays. Do you think Mason then is Ben's successor? You think he's going to be a good NFL quarterback? I, I, I don't think he would be here if the Steelers didn't think that. Now, if there's somebody else out there that's better, is it? What, what do NFL? you think though? Do you think he's a future NFL starter, like a good player? I, I think that he deserves the opportunity to do so. I do, and the Steel. I, I, I believe. I don't know this. I don't have any insider information. Or anything. I believe the Steelers think that they, he may be the guy. Are they 100 percent convinced? I don't think so because if there was somebody that was better. They'd put him in there, but I think that they think that he can at least he can be a starter in here. Is he an elite quarterback? But look at Derek Carr. Derek Carr was second round draft pick. He comes out there right now. It took him a few years. He had his lumps. He went through his growing pains. John Gruden has molded him. The guy was lights out last week. Lights out. Made every throw. Sometimes a guy just needs an opportunity and know that he's the guy. Well, he's going to get an opportunity this year. Ben, there's no way Ben's going to stay healthy the whole year. Well, if he's getting hit like that ten times, he's getting, getting hit like lit that, up. Right? He was lit up I like mean, Christmas tree. I, I think Ben's absolutely going to play Sunday, but you know what's going to for happen how long you? would be yeah, the question. Yeah, that's. I don't question. know. I, I don't know about Rudolph. That, that's my answer, though, is that I haven't seen enough to convince me yeah. that but he's going to be a good I, 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 and, and more to the point, you, you say the Steelers are convinced. I don't I'm know. Not, I'm, I'm not, not sure. I'm not sure. At least that he can play. That yeah. he's worthy of being a backup. I'm not sure. I trust the Steelers on their offensive judgment at all. They just changed coordinators, offensive line coaches, drafted a running back, did did 18 million things, and still won't even go for a fourth and one. So just because they're, they're, they think Mason Rudolph might be good, that certainly doesn't. You're talking me. about everything's changed. Offensive coordinator philosophy. There's one. The most important component hasn't changed. Starting quarterback. So do you blame him for their troubles? Through no, years? I'm just saying, I mean, I think there's a certain offense he likes to run right now. I think he likes the offense they're running is the offense that he wants to run, in my opinion. Except for the no huddle. Well, he, he wants to run the huddle. But right now, this offense, I mean, the creative stuff, we're talking about Canada coming, and we're so excited about all this creativity. You see it you see it here, you see it there, but you, you see it sprinkled in. Not even that, maybe one time in a game. But you go back to what Ben is comfortable with right now in his career, and that's sitting in shotgun with a sidecar. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's, that's what we've seen the last couple of years, right? Ron, I mean, this is very interesting. Wrong, 
So, it, so do you think that that the and I'm sorry for keeping no, no, going no, here. No, no, no. This fine. guy's on fire right now. <laughs> so do you think putting Rudolph in will enable Canada to run the offense that he wants? I think you'll see a little bit of offense because he's a young guy. I mean, Ben Ben's been around 19. We talked about this at the break. Ben's been around 19 years. Ben knows what he likes. He knows what he feels that his strengths are right now, and so they're going to cater to that. And Ben has a big time say in the offensive game plan. Someone like Mason won't have. He'll have a say, but not the kind of say and 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 weight that Ben does right now. They're going to run what Ben wants to run. Period. Period. What's in my opinion, right now. It's not working Except the right no now. huddle, which is his favorite brand of offense that he went but out we of his way but, yesterday. Yeah, we don't know the full story. We, we, don't, we don't know if that was a frustration comment. Who knows? We don't know what's going on inside. That. That's why I said we don't know what's going on on the south side right now. Right. Well, Tomlin admitted it wasn't part of the plan last week. Yeah. But right now, if Ben wanted in the game plan, it would have been in the game plan. That's, just, that's Ben's personality. Ben's not a guy that's, that's going to be acted upon. He's going to go out there and he's going to act. He's going to do it. Then he's unnecessarily causing trouble then. If, I, if he can get the no huddle in and he's telling the world that it's not in and basically I want it in. And that's then, then it could what's have been a common out of frustration. But he just lost a game and the offense isn't isn't firing on all cylinders. The offense is struggling. It's putting right offense now. Offense stinks. And, okay. <laughs> and, and, and so, Last and, and so he's rushing, frustrated. Three touchdowns and two yeah, No, I, they're, they're, it it's, not, it's not working. And so he's frustrated. And so those comments, sometimes you get comments that come out. And I'm sure when he goes home and he says, hey, Probably could have said it differently, but it is what it is. He said it. He and probably doesn't like getting hit 10 times. Absolutely place. not. Absolutely not. All right. Let's move on to the defensive side of the ball. Do you feel like they still could have won that game if T.J. Watt had stayed in there? Right there. Stop right there. 100%. 100%. Just T.J. Watt. Forget Allo Allo. Forget no Bush. Forget no Hayden. That's it. That's it. You think Just T.J. Watt alone, the game would have been different. Think about it. I think what he, was it 16 snaps he played in the first half? I think it was second five minutes quarter, left. He got hurt. Yeah, second quarter. I think it was like five minutes left, somewhere around there, plus or minus left in the second quarter. He got hurt on the inside move on the tackle, and 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 something happened to his groin. We don't know what exactly happened, but you could tell as he turned to run to the ball, and he just he started to to, to waddle, and and knew that was the groin. Um, he had an impact on that game just in those and sixteen plays. Going against yeah, Leatherfoot, Leatherwood was it Leatherwood? Um, <laughs> he well, got the guy. The guy. His head. Him. His head was spinning. His head was spinning. I mean, TJ had four tackles. He had a great tackle for a loss on a third down. He had that sack fumble he caused. Um, he, he also caused, I think, uh, he caused a false start. And that was just in 16 plays. And the Steelers went on to what they had total. Raiders had 64 total plays. So they had, a, he probably would have had another, what, 30 plays? So you think about what he did in 16 plays. You, 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 travel, you know, put that out there for another, for two times that. All right. Bush, yeah, three sacks. Bush, Bush practice yesterday. Hayden, I guess, limited. TJ limited. You've had groin injuries, yeah. I assume. Yeah. I mean, what is it like They're to tough. try to play with those? They're tough. They're tough, and and, you, and everybody heals differently, and it depends on, you know, what kind of how much pain you can deal with. But those things, you can start feeling like you're getting better, and often you go out there, and it's tricky. Mm. Um, I, Devin Bush practiced. I, I thought Robert Splain played well. I mean, somebody show me the, the film and tell me he didn't play well. There were a couple plays, but Devin Bush has a couple plays he always wants back. Every every pro player. Even T.J. Watt has a player, too, that he wants back in a game when he plays 60 snaps so, in a game. I mean, as, as could, this is a concern, then, for Watt, isn't it? Oh, there's no question. But listen, I, I, I think that it, he'll come back. The guy, the guy's in impeccable shape. He takes care of his body. He's going to do whatever needs to come back. Um, but I believe that you know, if he comes back, he is one of those guys. He's like a Troy Polamalu. This is why they're paying him 120 million. But yeah, sometimes whatever. Troy was slowed by that too. Every yeah, once in a while, yeah, 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 not, not in the way of injuries. What I'm doing, Stark, Stark. What I'm saying is, bro, that Troy at any moment could have a tremendous impact on a game. And TJ Watt can change game. He's a game changer. He's a generational player. And, and, and so this guy, can, you know, when the game is what there was a time in the game when it was it was close. What was it, it was 14-16. Uh, Right, and the Steelers just scored, and they went for that 61-yard touchdown pass. Who would who would have thought maybe play before that, or maybe at some point on that play, he would have cleanly beat Leatherfoot and gotten the sack? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you never know. Leatherhead, uh, Leatherfoot, but he's out. Leather, but he's out, and they have a bunch of hamstring and groins, as Ron said. Do you look at the way that training camp? If you're the Steelers and you have this many soft tissue injuries, do you start examining what you've done? I don't think so. I think it's coincidence. Um, you could anything I think, with his camp the way it went. Uh, you could say you know you know they don't the training camps aren't 
What the I'm Houston. talking T.J. Watt specifically and what he did and didn't do. Yeah, but you know what? Then you say, okay, well, what about these guys? What about what about Alex Highsmith? What about um, um, Bush, Hayden, Bush, and Hayden? Bush, those guys Hayden. that yeah, those guys that had they practiced. They was training camp. Now, you know, yeah, T.J. looked pretty terrific in the Buffalo. He did. Game, he did. He, he won a lot of snaps. It wasn't like he didn't yeah. play a lot of snaps in that game. Came out here and he had a tweak. It was hot. Hydration could have been an issue, right? Um, so who knows? There's a lot of factors in this that could take place. I think that having four guys with groins is more of a coincidence than a story. I know you. Uh, you're your former nose guard. You, your heart must bleed for oh. Alu Alu, huh? He's playing. He's for that defense. Even in that game, this is penetration. He was able to steal their grass on every play, and he was in the backfield on that play. And it was just friendly fire. TJ coming around, and TJ got great penetration on that one. Got an arm on the, I think it was his left arm on the back, and just spun around and spun him. And um, just heartbreaking how that happened. And, uh, you know, Tyson, a uh, huge loss. They're going to fill that in the middle. And hopefully, I'm hoping that Stephon can get back to it because they need another. He, he's, he's, he's a top level player. What went? What was at one point a strength of the Steelers' defense was that defensive line is now a question mark because you have you have so many guys that are down right now. All you got is Cam, really, that's proven. Yeah, and, and, and it's going to affect Cam. Listen, these now guys double him up every time. Exactly okay? right. They, you have nothing to take away from Isaiah Bug. Nothing to take away from Warmly. Nothing to take away from the other guys. Um, but the reality is, Cam is one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL. One of the best, if not the best. He's so good. His technique is. Impeccable. The guy's just, I mean, you talk about, you talk about going out there and not, it's, he's not trying to win every play. He's trying to play great technique and he wins because he plays great technique and he flies to the ball. The guy, the guy just turns and runs the ball and he just gives you unbelievable work ethic. I mean, he's a total pro. But the problem is when you don't have another guy that they're, they fear that they can't block one on one on the other side, um, they're going to double team him and make sure he's not a factor and they're going to believe that they can single block the other guy. So the, it's going to be, important that the other guys step up and beat those one-on-one blocks. Can't help but wonder what would have happened on it. In my mind, what was the play of the game? The Steelers had momentum. It was third and long, and Derek Carr hits rugs for the, the bomb touchdown play. I can't help but wonder if Watt would have made a play there, but he wasn't there. So let me ask you, what happened on that play, and was Trey Norwood supposed to get off the blocks a little bit quicker than he did on that blitz from well, the outside? Well, he's going to fall through, right? Make the sack. Right? Go, don't stop. He, he, he hesitated. The young guy just, you know, maybe, you don't know what was going through his mind. He just froze for a second there. Um, you know, listen, the reality is is that you, you never get beat deep. People, we, I come in here and we complain about this. Steelers giving up. Remember we talked about this last week, I think. Steelers giving up and giving a little cushion on some pass plays. It's always the philosophy that you don't give up the big play. Make a team methodically move belief, them. Yeah, right? and it's, it's really been a belief, a, a, kind of a, a, a team belief. You know, make a team strategically move the ball down the field um, and, and not just give them the big play because they believe that at some point, at some point, this defense has enough game, game you know, changers that they can make a play and get the ball back. Get a penalty, hold, draw a holding penalty, penalty, right? Get a sack. Do something. Get a turnover to get the ball back. But when you when you let that when you give up a 61 yard touchdown pass, uh, it's over, it's over. And they caught Minka in in, in in some in some open space, and he he he's supposed to stay you know, deep set, deep safety. He's supposed to stay you know behind the deepest guy, and and he got caught up on on, on Waller because they've been focused on Waller the whole game. And and uh, you know it's it's tough to you know sit there and just you know beat down on a guy Minka who is the great eraser man. He races so many guys for you know he was a big part of the reason why Waller didn't control the game. And so it's tough to come down on a guy like him who does so many great things throughout a game. That's what I talk about. Even the great players are going to have a player, too, that they wish they could have back. And this was one that Minka wishes he had back. Let's talk about the next game. Joe Burrow coming into town. And are these Bengals different? Ron wrote about it in the Post-Gazette the other day. We'll discuss the Bengals next with Chris Hoke. You can watch live video of what's going on in the studio right now. Take a look at 93.7thefan.com. Go to shows and live video.